Hello chess friends and welcome to Zarov's chess channel and welcome to a special video I wanted to show you today a great game played by my brother Goran he's also a chess player and uh, you can see his picture here uh, in the right corner uh, from the right side uh, this is my sister Yelna she knows also how to play chess so we are really a big chess family and I've published already some videos uh, of, of some chess games played by my nephew Philip he is really a talented player and uh, I've published also some games uh, by my uncle um, uh, Mato so we are really a big big uh, chess family and today um, I decided to show you a really really great game but it's also an instructive game uh, if you have troubles uh, while playing against d4 you can choose really this aggressive Benko Gambit it's really a great opening I think uh, while playing against d4 and you'll see in this game that I wanted to show you, uh, played by my brother, uh, how dangerous it is to decline the Benko Gambit. Uh, basically, when you decline it, you get sort of troubles. Black will have a uh, very nice active play, and uh, Goran will punish all of this, all of this inaccuracies and mistakes by by his mis uh, by his opponent with some great tactical calculations. So, uh, in the game, uh, he played against. Uh, uh, 1900 rated player I think and uh, it was uh, in the first move his opponent played the move d4 we have knight on f6 c4 and now c5 uh, and now comes this uh, declined variation knight on f3 because uh, if you try something like d5 then of course b5 is the most common line but uh, of course in the bank again but uh, what white probably wanted to do here is to go maybe into sort of a Maroxi bind uh, that can happen to you when you're playing the Benko or the Benoni setup after knight on f3 uh, and c takes d4 knight takes on d4 if you try something like I don't know knight on knight on c6 then knight on c3 bishop on g7 maybe and now e4 we have really this uh, Maroxi bind setup and uh, it's really really an annoying game sometimes to play against the Maroxi bind you see now in this uh, particular variation how to avoid this this types of lines and here uh, gonna play the most aggressive line with the move e5 it's really a brave decision because uh, basically you're leaving spaces behind and it seems after knight on b5 that you cannot play the move d5 because after uh, c takes d5 and uh, if you try something like queen takes on d5 you see uh, you uh, get this knight on c7 fork if you take with the knight then again the same idea queen takes on d5 queen takes and now knight on uh, c7 you lose simply peace so after e5 knight on b5 was split and d5 anyway we have c takes d5 and now bishop on c5 and this is this um, very nice setup uh, we're playing on this blockade against this potential d6 move so what we are not allowing in these types of variations is this d6 move if that happens it's uh, basically game over for you you you're not uh, supposed to leave this pawn really to uh, and create some pawn breakthroughs here gaining some space um here e3 is really the best move for white and uh, it's really hard to connect now uh, for for white at these two pawns if you try something like um e4 then of course knight on g4 is very dangerous uh, you're forced to bring the bishop here on e3 and losing the bishop in this early stage of the game with the bishop pair black is simply better so that's why here e3 is really a must move and now casting played by my brother uh, knight on c3 uh, regrouping a little bit because uh, th this knight uh, can always be kicked away with the move a6 but i think it's a passive move uh, you don't have to do that immediately you have to wait uh, your opponent to play the move a6 then maybe to kick your uh, knight away and here uh, knight on c3 was played as i mentioned and now e4 e4 is this uh, positional setup in these types of lines uh, here uh, we have gained really a huge space control on our other uh, on our opponent's side of the board and uh, it's really important to gain some space this pawn on e4 can of course be supported with bishop on f5 and then of course because we have the advanced pawn on the king side will coordinate on our attack on the king side whenever you have this advanced pawn and which is very well protected and supported uh you should really choose the direction of the attack where uh, where your 
pawn is aiming so basically this pawn is on the king side as i mentioned so that's why we should coordinate our attack here on the king side so in the game bishop on e2 was played and now bishop on f5 um, as mentioned we want to really stay on on this very important space control and um, here if it uh, here white tried queen on b3 uh with a direct attack uh, on the spawn on b7 and here my brother played really really a great move he played simply knight from b to d7 if you take queen takes on b7 this is really dangerous already because now we have bishop on d6 with the preparation to play knight on c5 uh, of course if you get the queen back queen on b3 then knight, uh, knight on c5 again getting a tempo uh, queen on d1 and now knight on d3 is very dangerous so you have to take after e takes d3 after castling you see it's really dangerous to castle here then bishop on h2 can be played we have the greek gift sort of and after uh, this types of lines it's the forced line here for white in order to keep some kind of a play here after f4 we can play simply queen on g6 and here after and uh, king on f3 we have also some fork ideas we have also um, then after the bishop on g4 idea so this will be i think a favorable game for black so that's why here uh white castle uh, didn't go for this uh, b7 pawn so this was sort of a poison pawn situation here which was very well recognized by my brother it's uh, again a sacrifice but you see with some activity and this was really, really a great counterplay knight on e5 and that's what i meant now we have the space control we are coordinating all, all of our pieces on the queen side this bishop is all, all uh, pardon me on the king side this bishop is also aiming on the king side the queen after a potential knight on g4 can also participate in the attack you see uh, white is lacking of defenders because basically what we have here is only the bishop that is uh, a little bit protecting this um, this king and also the rook and of course the pawns but we don't have the support of these three, three pieces and now it gets really really dangerous around the uh, around white's king so rook on d1 was played as i mentioned white's idea is to create this push of this pawn on d6 and then maybe liberate this diagonal for the queen but uh, but you have to have support by these pieces you see this knight has already occupied this c3 so basically you can play maybe knight on d2 and then maybe knight on f1 just in order to get another defender but this bishop is really really bad it's blocked out by its own pawn so it's really really already um bad here for white although the evaluation here is equal but from a strategical point of view and a tactical point of view i think i would rather uh, be uh, black here so knight on g4 was played and probably the best move is here simply to take bishop takes on g4 and uh, here bishop takes on g4 here knight on e4 uh, and then maybe rook on d uh, bishop takes on d1 queen takes on d1 would be maybe a calm line here for 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 white but here um uh, my brother's opponent made a mistake he played the move h3 and here goran found a very nice sacrifice he played knight on f2 after king takes on f2 of course queen on h4 with a check and now king on g1 and um what to do here you have to of course include all of these pieces in the attack now you have to uh, participate with all of your pieces so here queen on g3 was played but here he, goran missed maybe an immediate tactical shot he had to move knight on f3 knight on f3 is really dangerous if you take bishop takes on f3 after e takes f3 but it's really hard to see this move uh because the problem is as i said white cannot regroup so fast he has really troubles here uh, after queen on b5 in order to bring the queen maybe uh, into the defense we can play sim simply bishop on d6 and now try queen on g3 and uh, queen on h2 so that's why knight on d2 would be a forced move and now after f takes g2 maybe queen on e2 can be played and it seems now that uh, white can uh, really defend here but now very very annoying this queen on h3 after queen takes on g2 we have queen on e3 and this will be very very dangerous you cannot uh, play queen on f2 because you get uh, uh, bishop on h2 and this is game over because after maybe uh, king on f1 we have bishop on uh, bishop on h3 very very dangerous so see after 
queen on g, uh, uh, knight on f3 was sort of a missed move but it's really really hard to see here my brother uh, played queen uh, queen on g3 stays with the advantage of course so we have still possibilities to play this knight on f3 idea rook on f1 was played and now bishop on h3 now of course rook on f2 has to be played in order to defend this g2 because there was a checkmate threat and now f5 again my brother misses now maybe a better move uh, here uh, bishop on g2 uh, was a very nice uh, possibility because after rook takes on g2 now now knight on f3 after bishop uh, on f3 we have now queen on a uh, queen on uh, uh, e1 you have to bring uh, the king here on on a weird square on h2 and now bishop on d6 would be very nice of course H, uh, king on h3 has to be played but now queen on uh, queen on h1 and if you move the king then of course f5 here after king on g5 you have queen on h6 okay uh, after rook on f2 uh, my brother tried f5 uh, which which is also good of course trying to open the f file and also open uh, this diagonal for the bishop with the move very very nice move this move f uh, f4 so here d6 was played and now king on h8 it's not a problem anymore this pawn this pawn is now weak still we are staying with this very nice attack all of these pieces are participating in the attack knight on d5 was played and now very nice move f4 you see um, you cannot take uh, you cannot take because if you take here the pawn then of course uh, you lose simply this rook if you try to take with the rook then you get um, again a very very uh, annoying checkmate here on g2 so as i said f4 very very powerful uh, liberating all of this uh, files all of these pieces now now uh, queen on c3 was played and now we have f takes e3 by my uh, by by my brother and now rook takes on f take rook takes on f8 we have bishop on uh, bishop on f1 but now now knight on f3 and king on h1 and here in this position white resigned because we have a very nice checkmate here on h2 so great game as i mentioned for those who has, have troubles maybe your Banco gambit player i think here after knight on f3 as i mentioned your opponent would try to go maybe into this moroxis bind setups with uh, e4 uh, and then uh, knight on c3 and e4 ideas so when your pawn is declining uh, this uh, benoni or this benko gambit uh, uh, depends on on what op opening you're playing you can really really try this c takes d4 idea after knight takes on d4 e5 very very uh, annoying i think it's a great great uh, tactical line after knight on b5 and now d5 is the best move here it's really an aggressive way to battle against d4 but i think you have good good attacking possibilities especially after this move e4 which really occupied uh, the here white uh, white um, defense here it was really uh, a great coordination of uh, these minor pieces and checkmate was really unavoidable okay i hope you enjoyed this game uh, i'll publish more games uh, in this series um, of, of my family uh, i've published as i mentioned already some videos um, uh, of my nephew and i'll publish also a video in which i crushed antonio in 15 moves uh, you probably know about him he has the largest youtube chess channel we played the game and uh, i i was my brother sent me this game it was played uh, eight years ago uh, it was over in 15 moves i really forgot about that game maybe i'll publish it uh, also in one of my videos meanwhile you can watch my other commented chess games uh, here from the series and you can also watch my best chess games of all time if you want to see the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and you can also subscribe to my channel thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course